Gail Pennington with us from the St. Louis Post Dispatch, as well as stltoday.com. Good morning, Gail Pennington. Uh, how did how did I do on the name there? You did. You were you were actually not quite as close as you were last week. No, I'm trying. But I really appreciate the effort. I am trying from someone in your position. The post dispatch. Yes. Dispatch. Good. That was good. Yeah. Post Plus. dispatch. All right. Right. Uh, also, stltoday.com. Um, <laughs> TV critic extraordinaire. Uh, kind of Sunday nights, not as big as they were now that um, Mad Men's gone away. I was. I'm still very busy on Sunday nights. We, Game of Thrones ended last night. Ended its season last night. So there's that's that's marked off. Um, but I watch a couple of great reality competition shows on Sunday night. Food Network Star. Yes. And then Brother vs. Brother on Home and Garden TV. It's got a St. Louis girl competing in it. Oh, I kind of like that. I like those two brothers. I do, too. They're good. Yes. Yeah, they're actually pretty cool. Uh, how was Game of Thrones season finale? Was it worth it? It was uh, epic. <laughs> I can't say anything about it. People will be spoiled. Because... Something very big happened at the end. Sounds like... Now, I don't really watch Game of Thrones. Maybe I should get into it, but... um you should. It seems like all the characters are dying off. Well, that happens in the books, too, but luckily they started with approximately a million characters. Okay, got it. So they can kill off, you know, 700,000 and still have plenty of people to populate it. But you say Game of Thrones was fantastic last night. It was. Okay, all right. Uh, how Very many good season. How many seasons is this now for Game of Thrones? I, I don't know. How many more seasons Four, are left? I think. Um, they don't know how many because they don't know how many books they're going to be. Is it following the books closely? Relatively? It's fo- no, it's diverging more and more from the books. But the thing is that George R. R. Martin, who writes the books, they're very, very, very thick books, and he he doesn't write you know one a year. He's no Stephen King, mm-hmm. so I think they're afraid they might run out of book. Hmm. Seems like. I mean, is this sort then of like dungeons? Have to start making stuff up. Is this sort of like Dungeons and Dragons or The Hobbit? I mean, is this that sort of? Well, I I would say it wasn't completely. Unsimilar to um, to the Lord of the Rings, right? And do you need to read the book? To no, understand? you don't. In fact, I think it's better not to read the books. But mm. it's the thing I have a problem with is that it's not set in time anywhere, and it's not a real land, right? I know. I think that's really exciting. Yeah, it's a fake land, and we don't know what what day or year or time it is. Because it, but it has a lot of. Um, metaphors for like modern politics and family dynamics mm. even though it could be 2175 or 1982 it's no time it's no time right yeah. no time no yeah i got a hard i have a hard time with time with actually. no time <laughs> all right uh um and then uh what's this on vh1 i love the 2000s boy you, you're <laughs> getting old seem a little premature <laughs> to you to be doing a 10-part <laughs> series retrospective on the 2000s i agree aren't we kind of still in the 2000s <laughs> no we're in the 20 we're in when the we're in the, the 20 teens the, the tw- 20, 20 teens, teens. Yes, yes in the 20 teens i mean i loved the 80s that was great that was good but i'm with you but the 2000s it's this. well the thing about a retrospective on the 2000s it's really easy to find people who remember them <laughs> it's people who want to forget the 2000s that's who i want to know right. uh how's this rookie blue doing it seems like this this series won't die people love it it's it, see it's something new to watch in the summer right it's made in canada so it's real cheap for abc to put it on okay and it's okay you know, there are a lot of shows on TV that are that I think are you know okay, and they're they're entertaining if people like that sort of thing. Yeah, um, and that's what I sort of feel about about Ricky Blue. Yeah, the the girl on that, whoever the girl is, she's cute. I got a little thing for her. She's probably Canadian. Um, the the dark haired girl. Right. Uh, uh, anything else on TV, or, or are we in well, the summer doldrums now? There's a, no, there's a bunch of new stuff premiering. Um, Dominion Thursday on Sci Fi is uh, a post-apocalyptic series set in Las Vegas about a war between angels and humanity. That does not did sound good. Did you have to see a movie <laughs> named Legion? I did not oh. see a movie named Legion. Yeah, uh, that was about the, the archangel Gabriel coming to Earth and starting a war. Hmm. Boy, they're running I mean, out of ideas. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't think you can call this a fresh idea, but uh, it has really awesome special effects of angels growing big black wings. Okay. All right. Yeah. Dominion on sci fi. I enjoyed the angel effects. Uh, you know, I just like the fact that whether it's any good or not, that you don't have to watch a bunch of reruns in the summer, right. that they actually have new programming. Right, exactly. Um, the Last Ship Sunday on TNT is about um, a ship that's at sea, an American ship that's at sea, and when they come back, they find out a, a, some sort of mysterious virus has has wiped out a lot of of the world and they are some of the only survivors but they have some scientists who are going to try to solve it mm-hmm. i kind of like that yes. I do too. eric mm-hmm. dane is the captain and he's very um attractive he's yeah all right mm-hmm. I, yeah. I was i was trying to watch netflix the last two nights and my netflix is not working but everything else on my apple tv is working uh-oh. Is is Netflix... Well, Netflix has the new season of Orange is the New Black. It could be slammed. So, so in other words, Netflix is just to have too much capacity. You're the first person who's told me they've had a problem with it. Okay. But uh, that could be. Yeah. All right. Right. Um, interesting. Hmm. 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 Plot thickens. Because I'm really thinking about doing away with, with my cable. Oh, then you'll, you'll get it back in three months. Y- you think so? Yes. Because... Because well, people think that they can cut, cut cut their cable and then they can watch everything streaming, but you really can't. Right. Right. Well, there'll but, be there'll be some show that you absolutely can't do without, you know, rough rough cut with Tommy Mac or something like that. Well, I can get get that on DVD. Oh, I guess you can. Um, but the but the other thing too is you have to have a local channel, so I can have a HD antenna. Yes. To watch Kelly Jackson on KSDK Channel Five. Um, How, and, what kind of DVR are you going to have? Um, well, but, but I'll have a DVR like Netflix. Netflix is a streaming service that doesn't have everything. Okay, so I won't be able to record. What would I not be able to record? I, I, I wouldn't be able to record um, the news. I'd have to watch it or, or go online to watch it. You on? won't actually be able to record anything unless you get a DVR. Right. Right. Yeah, it'll, it'll be an interesting world. If but, I you, do it. but you can watch news online. You can watch, yeah. Ch- mm-hmm. Ch- Channel Channel Five streams, streams their streams their their news. Right. Um, I don't know. It, it'll be. A, you know what? It it would be a great experiment to see. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't get Cardinal games. You'd have to get the Cardinal games only on your app, uh, on your radio app, huh. uh, on your. It would just take on your MLB you know, app. Good planning to figure out where you're going to watch what. Yeah. Well, and I think the reason to do it is if you can't afford cable. Right. And but I he's swimming in but, it. But, 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 but hold on a second. My problem is that I'm paying for the Kardashians and I'm never watching them. That's that's my problem. Well, everybody pays for a lot of channels that they don't actually watch. <laughs> well, but but that's if, you, not a... if you could pick and choose, <laughs> if you could pick just the channels you wanted to watch, each channel would have to charge so much that you'd be paying more in the end anyway. Well, I just find it, you know, I I don't know. Seems to me like there's a lot of money, 110 bucks, 120 bucks a month for television. To watch a, just yeah, to watch six six channels, channels is a lot of money. I think mm. um, we'll no, see. I understand. I understand the argument. It's just that I know a lot of people who've cut cable, and then there's they're complaining to me that they can't watch Fargo because it's not streamed. Right. Unless uh, it's not streamed, unless you have a pay provider and can plug in that information. So I have it. I have heard that. HBO to go is actually thinking about opening it up and allowing people to subscribe to it if they don't subscribe to their cable. Have you heard that? I, I don't think that's going to happen. All right. So they, they want to protect the cable companies. Right. Or because vice versa. the point of having original programming on HBO is to um, entice them. Subscribers. In, in, entice them to come to cable. I'm not buy. saying in 20 years there might not be any cable at all and everything might just stream directly to you for a fee. Right. It'll be interesting. All right. All right. Uh, Gail, when can we see you? When can we read you? Be in the Friday Go section and Sunday A&E, and I'll have a live chat on Thursday. That's uh, Gail Penton. Gail, have a good week. You guys, too. STLToday.com, yeah. also at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, TV critic, traffic, news, weather, and then uh, David Stokes from the show.